Welcome everyone to our lecture. So in this lecture, we'll be looking at momentum. Okay, so the, mo the type of momentum, because there's different types of momentum, we'll be looking at linear momentum, all right? So which means that basically we'll be looking at objects that are moving in a linear fashion. They are either moving in the X direction, the Y direction, or in the combination of the X and the Y direction. So they are not rotating, uh, they are not circulating or anything. Um, so we're just looking at linear um, motion type, basically. All right, so before I start, guys, uh, please do support the channel. Please do subscribe, um, like the video if you like the video. Um, also share it with, with friends. Tell people on Facebook or wherever. Just share the video and tell them if you find it helpful. And just share it with your friends. I think that would be very nice. All right, in terms of linear momentum, for instance, what is this momentum that we're talking about? Say that you have an object, and this object is of mass m, and this object is traveling with a velocity v in that direction. So we define momentum, it is a vector, as a product of mass and the velocity. All right? So please, you have to consider the fact that it's a velocity, so you can get a negative or a positive momentum. Uh, and the units for this is just going to be kilogram meters per second. All right? That's basically how you write it. Or you could just say kilograms if you want, meters per second is still the same thing. Basically, these are the units, all right? An example, for instance, if I have a, an object that is moving in this direction with a speed of 25 meters per second in that direction, and the object has a mass of two kilograms, all right? So basically what happens here is you can find the momentum of this object which is going to be given by mv. So it's going to be a vector. So which means that you have to include it as negative or positive. So remember, I always choose this position as positive and I always choose that as positive. So even if I don't say it, remember, I'm always doing this. So this is going to be two, you multiply this by 25 and then it's going to be 50 um, kilograms meters per second. All right, so you can put a plus here, there is a plus there which just basically show, this is where you actually put the uh, direction, that's where you show, if it's negative, you're gonna put a negative there, if it's positive, you're going to put a positive in there, all right? So that's basically momentum. Now, this momentum can change, all right? So you do get something that we call a change in momentum, all right? So let's look at what do we mean by that this momentum can change. So I can have an object of mass M. So initially this object is going in this direction, and then it hits a wall, let's say that I have a wall. So when it hits a wall, it comes back. Of course, it's not going to come back down here. It's going to come back in the same line, but just to draw it. So if this is the initial velocity vi, let's call it vi. So which means that it's going to have a momentum, a initial momentum pi. Then it is going to change the direction. Let's just say it's coming back with the speed v final. All right. And it's still the same object, but now it's going in that direction. Okay, so it hits the wall and then it goes in that direction. So you can find a change in momentum. So the change in momentum will be given by um, the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So what is that? Now, remember that these are vectors, basically. So this is the same as saying the final momentum plus the initial momentum. So I'm just going to show you now using vectors why there is going to be a change. Even if the speeds are the same, let me say, for instance, this is going to be 25 meters per second, and then that's VI. Then let's just say VF is going to be minus 25 meters per second. Now the question is, is there going to be momentum? We can just keep the mass as two kilograms, all right? So is there going to be a change in momentum? That's basically what I want here. Yeah. Now what you will find, let's look at the vectors, for instance. If I was to draw these vectors, I am looking for something like this. So I have to substitute now here. So the momentum, final momentum is going to be VF final, all right? Minus, all right? Or you could say plus if you want. You could say plus and then minus. What is that momentum is M, VI, all right? Now, I mean, if you just ignore the minus, you multiply the positive and the minus, you basically get M is going to be equals to V final minus V initial. So which means that the change in momentum is going to be change in V. So if I know the direction of the change in V vector, 
I basically know the direction of change in momentum. And remember when we did Newton's tool, then I know the direction of the change in acceleration. Also when we did kinematics, I showed you this. So which means that if I know change in V, probably I know I also know the change in um, acceleration vector, and I also know the change in momentum vector. Although this is giving you a clue that this momentum somehow will be related to the force, but we're going to come to that. All right, because already this change in V is related to acceleration, acceleration is related to the force. So we can tell that so these things somehow are going to relate. But we'll come we'll come back to that. Now let's see, is there a change in velocity? Remember how you find the change in velocity. The change in velocity vector is the final velocity vector minus the initial velocity vector. Now let's let's draw this. So the first vector is the final velocity. There it is, the final velocity. Okay. Now, remember when I'm doing this, um, it's the same thing as I'm adding the minus VI. So if you look at this, VI is like this. So which means that minus VI changes the direction. Again, go watch vectors if you don't understand. So which means that I have to, from this VF, sorry, this has to be positive. This VF, I have to add in the minus VI. So the minus VI is going to go like that. And that's minus vi so you can see from this that there is a change in velocity vector which is this vector here which is going to the change in velocity so there is the change in velocity even though i'm traveling with the same speed this way traveling with the same speed in the other direction i although the speed is constant the magnitude is constant but because of the change in direction there is a change in velocity vector hence i have this case here that there's going to be a change in velocity so for instance, using this example, I could actually find this momentum is going to be 2. And then V final is going to be minus 25. V initial is going to be 25. So basically, you have a situation where this is minus 50 times 2. This is going to be minus 100 kilogram meters. No, 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 not per. Kilogram meters per second. Right. So this is basically the direction you can see that the direction of change in V is minus. I mean, there it is here. It's going that way. It's minus. Even the change in vector is also in the same direction. The change in momentum is in the same direction. And the change in V is also in the same direction. So whatever the direction of change in V is, that is going to be the direction of the change in momentum. Not the direction of the velocity. Not necessarily the direction of the velocity. Not the final velocity. Now you will see this when we are doing two dimension. In one dimension, it may be true, just depends, it may be true. But in general, it's not always going to be the case. Um, we have to check, we have to check in terms of the direction as to how it's going to be influenced. So remember what we said in Newton's two, we said that the sum of all the forces, which is F net, remember we said we can find F net on an object. And the sum of all the forces is going to be equals to MA. We said that this is going to be F net. All right, so I can continue with this. So where is, where is the sum? I'm just going to say F net is going to be the mass, but the acceleration, you already know that the acceleration is given by change in V over change in T. Remember, this is what the acceleration is, okay? But if you look at this, this is the same as the mass, and then change in V is going to be V final minus V, initial all right which is going to be over the change in t this is the same as vf like this minus v m v i because you have to multiply by that there's a bracket here there's a bracket there and then this is going to be change in t all right now which means that my f net the f net which is the sum of all the forces is actually going to be equals to the final momentum because MVF is the final momentum, it's a vector, minus the initial momentum, it's a vector, over the time. Now, this in final minus the initial is the same as changing that, and then this is changing P. So you can, you can see that F net is going to be the change in momentum. All right? So, but then the problem that we have here, um, in most cases, because I can manipulate this. In actual fact, let me manipulate everything and then get another another variable that I want to define. So what I could do from this equation, which is F net, 
is equals to change in momentum over change in time. This, this equation is very important. I could actually find that the change in momentum is going to be equals to F net multiplied by delta T. I just cross multiplied in this equation and just made uh, delta P the subject of the formula. Now, this here is something that we call impulse. So I am going to, I'm going to define this impulse as J is a vector. It's going to be F net change in T. Now, the, the issue, however, the, the problem with this is most of the time you don't know. This impulse is the one that tells you how much force was actually transferred to the object, was applied to the object when the object actually made impact. So an, an, an example of this is you have a ball that is going this way, it hits a wall. When it hits the wall here, because it's hitting the wall with a velocity v, what the wall does, the wall exerts a force on it in that direction. But this force, sorry, the force, it exerts a force on it in that direction. Now this force changes, either the ball is going to stop or the ball will probably come out with another velocity here, v, v, v1, all right, if this is v0. So why? Because the wall has exerted a force, forcing this ball to actually change direction. That's what happens when you have a tennis ball, you hit the wall, it comes back, you hit the wall, because the wall is exerting a force, changing its direction back. Now, whilst it was basically in contact, while it was in contact, then that force was being transferred. Now, normally we don't know that force. You may find that, for instance, if you check that force with time, it hits it, then the wall slowly, slowly applies a force, applies a force, applies a force, and then it reaches the maximum, and then the wall leaves the ball alone. So the force maybe may go like this. It could be different. I mean, you could have a situation whereby the function that the force actually follows is different. So in this case, for instance, we don't know how the force is going to vary. So what we normally do, rather so than to avoid a lot of uh, situations whereby we have to know, find the force, which is complicated, we normally just take the average force. This is just going to be the average force. And we just say the impulse, we are going to consider the average force. We would write it like this as well. Just say that F average, F average delta T. You could write it like this, it's fine. This is going to be the, the vector. Of course, this force is going to be the vector. So you could actually desire, uh, define your, this is how you could actually define your impulse. This is how we are going to use it. And uh, another important equation is going to be this equation here. All right. So these are the two equations that we, we are going to use. And remember, because we have that complicated force, we normally just take the average. So let's just do an example on this one. And let's see if we can come up with an example on this one. All right. So I have a ball. There's the ball. It's a mass, basically. Let's say the mass is 2 kg. We're going to keep this 2 kg. And let's just say this mass. Let's just say that this mass is traveling at 8 meters per second. So it's going to hit a wall and then it's going to come back with a velocity. Let's just say it's going to come back at minus 6 meters per second. All right, it's still the same. It is still the same mass. So it is still the same mass and then it's coming back with this type of um, a velocity. Now let's just say when it was here, when it was hitting the wall, it actually spent um, 1.2 seconds in contact with the wall. So the time that it was in contact with the wall was actually two seconds. Okay, so now since we have this, maybe the question would say, for instance, you need to find the change in momentum. That's maybe one thing that we can find. Let's just find the change in momentum. So the change in momentum will be given by M delta that, which is just M. If I call this V0 and I call this V1, this is going to be V1 minus M V0, all right? Or we could just write it like this, actually. Uh, we could just say this is V0, and then you just put brackets here. This is going to be 2, and then this one is minus 6. This one is minus 8, which is basically going to be minus 14 times 12 times 2, sorry. And then this is going to be 28 kilogram meters per second all right this is the change in velocity vector but remember what i said we said that well the change in velocity vector is the same as impulse why am i saying that because the same change in velocity is the same as 
the average force multiplied by t. Okay, so I can actually find this average force. I'm just going to write like that when I want the average force. So which is basically going to be changing momentum over changing time, which is going to be minus 28 over 1.2. And then, so you do that, and then you actually find that your average force is going to be equals to minus 23 Newton. Okay, so you can find the average force that the wall exerted in order to change the momentum. So you can see that the force is in the negative direction because when the object came in, it came in and then it actually hit it, it was moving in that direction. So that's why then the force was applied in that direction to counter the impact of the ball. So that's basically how it is actually done. All right. Okay. So now what happens in a situation whereby there are no external forces? Okay. So, but before I talk about that, we need to consider certain things. Okay. For instance, if I have an object, there's my ball and my ball is just coming down like this. Let's just say it has mass M. Everyone would agree that there's a force of gravity G that is acting on the ball. So there is an external force in that case. All right. However, if I was to consider the similar case, but then there's a ball is going down, and then I'm considering the earth. So now the earth is also feeling the force of gravity. So there's Fg on the ball, and then there's F, let's say F2, let's say F1. Right now you can see here F1 is going to cancel with that. All right. So basically these forces are going to cancel. Now, if I consider this thing as a system, if I consider this thing as a system, then there is no external force acting on the system, meaning that both the earth and the ball are a system, so there's no external force acting on it. But if I just consider the system to be this ball, then there is an external force acting on this system, because then basically this system is moving, it's accelerating downwards. But if this is the system, basically then the, the forces are not extra, there's no external force. So this means that the sum of all the forces is going to be zero, okay? Because there's no external force that is acting up here, all right? So the sum of all the forces is just going to be zero, okay? But we already know that the sum of all the forces is actually the same as change in momentum over time. So which means that the change in momentum is a vector is actually going to be given by um, the change in momentum is actually going to be given by this um, F multiplied by T. But the sum of the forces is zero, and then you're multiplying it by T. So therefore, the change in momentum is also going to be zero. And this is where now we say that the change in momentum is going to be equal to zero, which means that P final, this is a vector, P final minus P initial is going to be zero, which means that P final, the momentum at the, fi the final momentum is going to be the same as the initial momentum. Then in this one, what we now say is that the momentum of an isolated system is always conserved. Why? Because these forces here, instead of becoming external forces, they become internal forces. And as internal forces, they tend to cancel each other out. One way or the other, they will just cancel each other out. So which means that there is no external force on the system and the final momentum and the initial momentum is actually going to be the same and momentum is conserved. This is very important, so I'll put an MB. This equation here, we are going to use it over and over and over as you'll see, all right? Okay, so now, which means that the, so, a side note on this one is when you are considering the final momentum of the system and the initial momentum of the system, you have to consider the total uh, momentum of the system. For instance, before, afterwards, maybe this two will collide. Maybe the ball is going to come and hit the ball, right? So before it, it was somewhere in air, afterwards it's going to end up on the surface of the earth. So you'll have to momentum afterwards. What happens afterwards is that you will have the speed of the ball, so it's going to have its own momentum. There's going to be a final momentum of the ball. There's going to be a final momentum um, of the earth. And then before that, there was the initial momentum of the ball and the initial momentum of the earth. So that is why we're saying that the sum, to, the sum 
or the, or the total momentum in, in a way, let's put it like that. The total momentum of a system is actually conserved, but you still have to consider what are the different components in that system that have different momentum. When you add all of that momentum, then it's going to be conserved. You can't just say the momentum of this ball is conserved. It doesn't make sense. For instance, if this momentum comes in, if this ball starts here, it hits the earth, it was coming in maybe at some velocity, 8 meters per second, it hits here, and then it comes out, it loses some energy, maybe now it's 6 meters per second. This momentum of the ball alone is not going to be conserved because if you find a change in momentum of the ball, it's going to be some value. Okay, so it's not conserved. But if you take the earth and the ball, then it is actually going to be conserved. All right. So basically, this is how you you actually um can look at these systems uh in terms of what's happening in terms of the momentum. All right. All right. So from there, we can actually do a number of uh, problems and we can actually now start considering something that we call collisions. All right. Now, collisions, we, we're familiar with this. For instance, even when it's not nice, but I have to say something, even when there's an accident, it's a collision. When you're hitting the ball and then the ball hits the wall, that's a collision. You bump to a friend, that's a collision. Whether it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a light collision or a hard collision, but it's a collision anyway. All right. So it is collision. All right. So basically, so we have to look in that. So, all right, we have to look at collisions, basically. Now, there's generally three, well, there's, there's three types. So you either have a, a perfectly um, or complete, sometimes they'll say complete, um, elastic collision. Or you have a perfectly oh, or complete inelastic inelastic collision. Or you could actually just have an inelastic collision. So it's not perfect. So I'll explain all of this. Don't worry now. Um, at the moment, don't worry about them. I'm just going to explain everything now, now. All right. So I will go, I'm going to start with the inelastic collision and then I'm going to show you how, how they basically are. All right. So let's change the color. So for inelastic um, collision. All right. Now, what is this one? So this one, um, you have a situation whereby you have mass M1. Let's say mass m1 is moving in this direction. All right. So let's call the initial velocity u, u1. Okay. And then we have this mass m2. Let's just call the velocity of m2 u2. This is before. All right. What happens afterwards is that m1 is going to stick to m2. All right, and then they are going to move as a unit with the same velocity v. All right, so in this case, the potential, the momentum before now, I just, I'm teaching energy a lot these days, so I'm, I'm still having potential energy stuff. All right, and then the momentum before is going to be the same as the momentum after. The momentum before is going to be the same as the momentum after. Now, what is going to be the momentum before? The momentum before is going to be m1, u1, plus m2, u2. Now, you must substitute the negatives when you're substituting the values, okay? This is going to be the final velocity. Momentum is going to be... Now, you treat this one as a unit. You just treat it as the same mass. It's like it's the same mass now. It's just one mass. And you could call that mass m. So you could call that mass m which is going to be M1 plus M2, all right? So what you're going to have here is you're going to have M1 plus M2, both of them, they form the same mass and they are moving at the same speed because now they are moving as a system, all right? So this is the momentum in before and the momentum after. Now, what differentiates this, whether it is elastic or inelastic, uh, of course, this is also very important, but this is the part that is very important. When you take the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy before, 
and the total kinetic energy of the system after, they are not going to be equal. So if the kinetic energy before maybe was 400 joules, you'll find that afterwards you're going to have 300 joules. Normally the reason why is because when it's colliding, you lose some energy. There's sound, um, there's friction there, um, there's thermal energy because when you touch the surface, it's going to be hot. So you lost some energy basically. All right. So in a real world, there isn't a perfect elastic case, uh, but I'm, I'll get into that when I explain it's fine. But then here, when you actually take the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after, you will actually discover that the kinetic energies are not going to be equal. You can still calculate them. For instance, if you want the kinetic energy before, it's just going to be half m1 u1 squared plus half m1 u2 m2 sorry u2 squared and that's just going to be the moment kinetic energy before the collision the kinetic energy after the collision the kinetic energy after the collision is going to be m the capital letter m which is going to be m1 plus m2 right half of that multiplied by v squared and when you when you compare the two kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after they are not going to be equal so you have an inelastic collision when it is like this but then i'll get into that actually when i do something else but when it's like this it is actually known as the perfectly inelastic um collision collision that's basically the case that you're going to have here okay so now what you're going to do is let's just look at a case where we just have an inelastic remember this one here before it was completely inelastic what happens if it's just inelastic it's just inelastic so I have a mass M1 moving with U1. Now let's just say it's moving in that direction. Just say I also have U2, which is mass 2 moving in that direction. But let's just say M1 is moving very fast. It catches up and then pumps into M2. Into M2. Right? What happens afterwards, maybe let's just say U2 maybe continues. I'm not saying this is always going to be the case, but then it's going to have its final speed V2. Then maybe let's just say M1, maybe go into that direction, M1, M2. Then this is going to be V1. So here you still have the situation whereby the momentum before is going to be equal to the momentum after. All right. So the momentum before is going to be M1, U1. This one is going to be M2, U2 is going to be equal to M1, V1 plus m2 v2 now the speeds are different so it's no longer the case like the one that you have now the difference here is that you still have the momentum before uh, kinetic energy before not equals to this is how you write not, not equals to kinetic energy after all right so this is what makes this case inelastic but the speeds are different so <clears throat> sorry in the in the case of a perfectly elastic uh, situation right um basically you still you have the two objects that are sticking together right and then here in this case they don't stick together uh so some energy is transferred and then it's actually just um you have a situation whereby the objects are actually moving in different directions or it could be the same direction it could be anything really but then you lose some energy that is why the kinetic energy um, is not going to be equal, right? So I'm not saying that in all cases, you're going to get a case, a situation whereby the object is going to go backwards or in any case. It just depends on the situation, all right? And then as to what you will actually get. Okay, so um, let's just look at some few examples on this. All right, let's just say that I have an object with mass equals to one, and then let's just say that object is going to be 10 kg, and then that's the object. Um, and then let's just say the object is moving in this direction. The initial velocity of that object is going to be 20 meters per second. And then let me just say I have an object two. This is a very huge object, and then with a mass of 150 kg. All right, and then this U2 basically has a you it's basically at zero meters per second all right and then afterwards let's just say the two objects are going to stick together and then they're just going to move in that direction all right maybe let's just make it 100 i think if you be fine maybe 100 uh let me see yeah let's just make it let's just make it a situation whereby it's like 70 kg so i don't make it too huge maybe there won't be enough energy i don't know 
all right so i don't want the situation with my design we not even have energy to be transferred so that they move together all right then let's just see afterwards they actually move together like that all right um so in that case uh we want to find let's just find the final speed v and then let's just find the kinetic energy before the kinetic energy after so to find the kinetic uh the final speed v i'm just going to say m1 u1 right because momentum the total momentum before is going to be equals to the total momentum after all right so these are vectors so this is going to be m2 u2 right they use and the velocities are vectors plus not minus plus and then this is going to be equals to now afterwards you can see that m1 and m2 are together so the total mass is going to be m1 plus m2 they are together and then they're going to move with the same speed I mean, if you like, you could actually say m1 v plus m2 v. You could say it like that if you want. It's the same thing, all right, which is still going to be equals to m1 plus m2, and then it's going to move with the same speed. So we're just saying if if it happens to be this case, all right, uh, in, in, in an elastic case, and then what would be the situation, all right? How would you actually find it, all right? Um, so we're assuming that somehow this ball is sticky um and then it's not going to bounce back so we can just uh change the properties of the material such that when it hits that object it sticks to it and then basically making that object move so we can add a situation like that all right so as we can see here v is just simply going to be m1 u1 plus m2 u2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this becomes m1 we said is 10 kg then we said this is 20 and then we said this is 70 but then this is zero and then this is 10 plus 70 which is 80 so this is just 200 over 80 then the speed is going to be 2 point something okay so the speed is going to be 2.5 kilo ah meters a second i nearly said the kilogram I'm thinking it's actually momentum all right so basically this is my speed my final speed so if i want the kinetic energy before the total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic energy after let's just look at the total kinetic energy before it's just going to be half m1 v1 a u1 sorry u1 squared then the second one is just going to be zero because this is half m2 but then the speed u2 is going to be zero so this is going to be zero so this is just going to be half 10 times 20 squared all right which is just 5 times 400 this is going to be 200 joules all right all right uh i'm sorry 2000 not 200 uh 2000 sorry about that all right um okay so this is the kinetic energy before the kinetic energy after the total kinetic energy after is just going to be half the total mass the total mass is m1 plus m2 and then the final speed which is v squared so this is just half multiplied by 80 because this is going to be 10 plus 70 remember we changed the mass to 70 then we found that this is going to be 2.5 you square that so the kinetic energy after is going to be less so you can see that a lot of energy was actually lost probably because of when the ball was actually sticking it lost a lot of energy sticking there and then just to move this object with that uh, velocity all right so this is the situation whereby you can use let's just look at another okay so let's just look at another example um so one of the famous examples that you generally find in almost any anywhere generally of course you'll have to work it out differently just depends on what you're looking for so let's just say you have a small piece uh that is like 12 gram and then um i don't know its initial speed but it's moving in that direction and then i have a big piece with mass m let's just say the mass m2 is 7 kg and then you have a situation whereby this is u2 but then this is at rest initially now there's a rope here so what will happen after is that now you have two afters here okay so what you assume here is that when this uh small piece you can think of it like a bullet hits this piece we just just think of this as wood right so you have like a bullet you have wood now this bullet is going to go inside the wood and then this wood is going to actually have the initial um so there's going to be an afterwards 
afterwards it's going to actually start moving after the bullet is inside it's going to start moving with the velocity let's call that velocity v1 okay that's afterwards all right so it's going to start moving with that velocity v1 let's just say it's starting to move it's going to move with that velocity here okay it's fine let's get, get a bit like this but let's just say there's no height change and then the second after is that after some time then the object is going to be somewhere here but it's going to come to a stop and it's going to raise from the from this position here if this is level this is level from this position here is actually going to rise by a certain height and maybe let's just give uh, that height like five centimeters let's just say it's going to be five centimeters so you have a bullet coming in it hits it goes inside the block so it must give it an initial velocity so there must be some velocity that is going to travel let's, uh, let's just assume it's going to travel with that velocity and then afterwards it's going to stop all right so you have the two afters maybe you're asked to find the and then you are actually asked to find the initial um you are asked to find what was the speed of the bullet all right so you could actually say momentum before so you're looking at case one and then there's case two so what happened case one between case one and case two is that i have a momentum before which is going to be equal to momentum after okay so this is going to be m1 u1 plus m2 u2 this is going to be zero anyway the u2 mu u2 is going to be zero because the velocity u2 is zero and then afterwards this is the case here you have this block M1 and this block M2, they are together, they are moving together. So it's going to be M1 plus M2, and then this is going to be equals to V, and they are moving with the speed V1. So this one here is, you are just taking the velocity immediately when the block enters, and then just assume that it just moves with that constant velocity, and then eventually it's going to slow down and stop somewhere, all right? Uh, so when you when it's moving eventually afterwards it's going to move with that then of course the velocity is going to de decrease over time so it's not going to be constant so it's going to decrease over time so you don't consider that and then it decreases decreases, and then stops all right so here when it stops you're going to do something else remember we want this one all right so what we have is we have m1 u1 this is going to be m2 zero here and then this is m1 plus m2 and then this is v1 all right so this is going to be zero so what you have is you have a situation whereby m1 u1 is going to be m1 plus m2 and then this is actually going to be equals to v1 all right so you can just say this is the equation one because we don't know u1 we don't know v1 immediately you have a one equation and you have two unknowns you're going to need smart chaos equations, so we'll just say this is going to be equation one. All right, so you won't be able to see some parts now uh, because I cut the screen somewhere. So afterwards, um, you are now going to consider the kinetic energy um, before and after, basically, right? So between one and three, hopefully you can see that. All right, so you are just going to consider the kinetic energy between two and three, sorry, not between one and three, between two and three. So what happens? So it left with an initial velocity V1, then all of that kinetic energy here, since it's V0, and then it's actually transformed into potential energy. Okay, so here there's going to be M, let's just call it capital letter M because it has a bullet, let's call it capital letter M. So, and then here there's going to be half the capital letter M, and then V1 squared. And then the kinetic energy here is zero, and then here also the kinetic energy is going to be zero here. So basically here at two, the situation that I have is I have the kinetic energy, which is M, V1. Remember M, capital letter M, is just going to be M1 plus M2. That's basic to M. And then afterwards, I'm not going to have the potential energy, so the potential energy will be zero. And then afterwards, the kinetic energy is zero, which is here three, the kinetic energy is zero, but there is a potential energy mg h. So you can see that this m's cancel. Um, and then I just have a situation whereby, all right, and then this is basically going to be equals to, you can find this is squared, sorry, and then this is going to be v1, and then v1 is just going to be the square root of two, 
gh just do the algebra and then you find that then you can call this equation 2 then this equation 2 is going to be substituted here when you do that and then you get that m1 u1 is going to be equals to m1 plus m2 and then when you get v you're going to do the square root of 2 gh all right so you have everything here uh now you can actually find what's going to be m1 in this case so sorry you're going to find what is going to be u1 that's what you're looking for it's just going to be m1 plus m2 over m1 and then just multiplied by 2gh all right then you substitute everything there now remember m1 is i think it's 12 gram let's just check m1 is is 12 gram and then the other one is 7 gram all right and then the speed i don't know all right so m1 is 12 gram which is going to be 12 divided by 1000 is going to be 0, 0.0012 remember you must convert that to kilograms right don't leave that mess uh don't just don't put the brackets um brackets are not necessary 0, 0.012 plus and then this one is 7 grams and then this is 0, 0.0012 m1 and then multiplied by the square root of 2, 9.8, and then you said 5 centimeters, convert this 5 centimeters into um, meters, it's going to be 0, 0.05 meter. Okay, so you'll find what is this U1 here, and then basically that becomes 0, 0.012 plus 7 divided by 0, 0.012 multiplied by that square root of 2 times eight times zero comma zero and that's a very high speed that's like seriously high speed high, very high okay so this basically becomes 578 uh, meters per second that's a very high speed so basically it's just it's very high um okay so basically this is what i have Okay, let's just do another example. So what you're going to have is let's just have one big mess. And then this is just going to mess M. Let's call it capital letter M. And then afterwards, what basically happens is you're going to have M1. All right. Um, let's just say M1 is going to have a speed that way. And the final speed, let's just call it v1 and we don't know that speed we are going to look for the speed then you are going to have m2 and let's just say m2 is going to have a speed that way let's call it v2 and it's going to be minus 0, 0.5 meters per second then let's just say we are going to have m3 and it's going to have a speed that way and let's just say it's v3 and this one maybe let's just say it's going to be minus six meters per second now the question is find the final speed for the mass one so basically it is an explosion type of a question so in this situation um i mean there's ways you can have something it explodes into different pieces you can have people sitting maybe somewhere on the boat and then they jump to the river or the sea and then the boat is gonna shake to a certain direction depending on where people are jumping so there's so many scenarios that you can actually have here i mean even if you are in a moving um cart for instance and then as you jump off it will move a bit so and then you say so this is, these are the types of problems that you can actually have um there's many scenarios that you can actually create as well but I think it would have been it's, it's a good idea to just give you an idea on how to deal with problems like this. So in this one, the momentum before, of course, you are going to say the total momentum before is going to be equals to the total uh, total momentum after. These are vectors. So before, what do you have? You just have mass. And then let's just say u is just zero. So initially, it's zero. It was not moving. So just u. And then afterwards, you have three pieces. You have mass one with speed v1. You have mass two with speed v2. You have mass three with speed v3. All right. So this one is going to be zero because this is just going to be a mass. You multiply it by zero. 
and then this one uh, is just going to be m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 okay all right and then from here this is going to be zero is it's going to be equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 so you want v1 so you're just going to say i'm just going to make v1 the subject of a formula hopefully you know the maths by now and then this is just simply going to be minus m2 v2 minus m3 v3 and then everything is going to be divided by m1 then you substitute all the values here all right and then so we didn't give you messes so let's just assign whatever messes we can assign so what i'll do is i'll assign this 100 kg i will assign this one a 70 kg and then i'll assign this one a 50 kg all right so let's just do it like that and then let's just come here and then so we said m2 is going to be 100 kg it's minus there's minus 100 kg and then v2 we said is going to be minus 0 comma 5 so basically here is still vectors right everything here is still vectors so basically you haven't considered the directions yet so you haven't yeah, like included the negatives and the positives right everything here is still vectors right even here is still vectors basically okay and then only when you start substituting then you substitute the actual values all right so this is going to be minus and then m3 we said is 50 and then we said v3 is going to be minus 6 if i remember very well and then this is going to be divided by 70 and then v1 is going to be equals to okay so everything is going to be equals to 5 meters per second all right so this is going to be v1 okay so i think this is fine there's so many problems that you could come up with so you could just go to any textbook you can just go to anywhere where you can find problems but generally textbooks are good source where you can find problems past papers different university um past papers depending if you have access to them or not and then you can just basically try out um different um problems even at high school you can try question papers you can try your study guides and so forth and you'll find more problems, right? So now we are just going to look at a case whereby it's an elastic collision, all right? So we are just focusing on, 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 on that's one S, collision. So you're just focusing on um, one dimension at the moment. So you're not saying two dimension. We're still going to consider the two dimension case, okay? All right, so an elastic collision is a situation whereby you still have your momentum before is going to be equals to momentum after, total momentum. But another thing is that your total kinetic before is going to be equals to the total kinetic after. This is what makes it elastic, basically. All right, so basically you're saying you don't lose energy. Now, in real life, it's, it's almost impossible not to lose even a fraction of energy, but I mean, you could you could come up with situations whereby you are approximately uh, not losing um, any energy. Or so in this case, we are just ignoring um, whatever small amounts of energy that we can use. So this is a situation whereby. So maybe let me just say I'm going to have mass m1 moving with velocity u1. Let's say it's moving this way. Let's just start with the case whereby this is stationary. So this is just going to be M2. And then this is going to be U2, which is going to be zero. So afterwards, let me just say, maybe you just have your M2 moving in that direction. All right. Um, so let's just give it V2. And then you have M1. Uh, let's just say it's moving in that direction. But it's fine because when you're deriving the equations, we are not going to consider directions. And when you substitute the values, we are going to actually get the directions when you substitute the values. All right. Um, so this one is just going to be M1 and it's going to be V1 in that direction. So the question is, what equations can I use? So I'm going to try and come up with equations such that I can find the final speed V1 and final speed V2. Uh, with just knowing the initial speed U1. Um, so I'll only need the masses in U1. 
So I'll try and derive equations such that I end up with that situation. All right, so let's start with a simpler case that we all know. Um, and then, so that is momentum before. It's going to be equals to momentum after. So I'm going to derive the equations and then I'm just going to highlight them. I'm just showing you maybe if you were asked to solve it or show how to actually get whatever situation that they are going to give you, you could show it because I you'll never know um, in a test or exam if they want you to show, they want you to do the maths or not. All right. So for instance, now on this one, this is just going to be M1 U1 plus M2 U2. Remember these are vectors, so I'm not going to put the arrows on top. And then this is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Okay. Um, now, so this is going to be zero. So I'm ending up with M1 U1. Um, because remember u, u, u2 is zero so when i substitute u2 here this term actually goes away and then this is going to be equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 all right um so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to group everything um together and when I group it together, I am just simply going to do a situation whereby I'm just going to have M1, U1, minus M1, V1. All right, this is going to be M2, V2. All right, so this is just the situation. So you could actually say this is the same as M1, U1, minus V1. All right, and then this is just going to be equals to m2 v2 and then just call it this equation one all right because you don't know v1 you don't know v2 so it means that you're going to need um a second equation that is going to help you actually solve this all right so let's see if we can get a second equation let me just open space and then i'll solve everything even on this other side all right another one is we know that the kinetic energy since this is elastic so normally the questions will tell you that assume that they are elastic so they are going to give you a hint somehow right and then so that you know how to approach the problem okay so and then this is going to be ka so what is that the total energy before is going to be half m1 u not v u1 squared plus half m1 u2 sorry m2 u2 squared let me be careful now and then half and then m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared okay so you can see here all the halves are going to cancel if you divide both sides by half so you end up with m1 u1 squared plus this is going to be zero because you're going to substitute u2 and then this just the cost to m1 v1 squared plus m2 v2 squared all right so this is basically um what you have so i'm going to continue working with this problem somewhere here so when i continue with that i'm going to have m1 u1 squared minus m1 v1 squared this is going to be m2 v2 squared then this one is just going to be m1 like this and then u1 squared minus v1 squared all right then this is m2 v2 squared now remember in mathematics if you have something like um x squared minus uh, y squared uh, this is a difference of two squares. You couldn't actually say this is x minus y and then this is x plus y. So you could do something like this. So this is the same thing here. The difference of this is the difference of two squares. So this is basically this. And then you just say u1 minus v1, u1 plus v1. And then this is just going to be equals to m2. This I'm going to write this m2 v2. So this v2 squared basically the same as v2 multiplied by v2. That's basically what v2 squared is. So I'm going to write it like v2, like v2, like that. All right. Um, so let's just call this equation 2. Now, if you check here, where I see m2 v2, which is this part here, 
I can actually substitute this. All right. So if I do that, I have M1, U1 minus V1, U1 plus V1. This is going to be equals to M1 because I'm substituting that. U1 minus V1 and then V2. So you can see that M1 is going to cancel this M1 and then u1 and this v1 is going to cancel so i just end up with the situation whereby u1 plus v1 is going to be equals to v2 can call this equation 3 if you want all right so what you're going to do is you're going to take this equation 3 and then you are going to substitute it um somewhere here and then basically you can get uh you can eliminate something here so what i'm going to do is you could either solve for v1 it just depends what you want to solve first you could either solve for v1 or you could just solve for v2 it's just up to you all right um which one you want to start with it should it shouldn't matter anyway all right so if you want to be left with v2 you because you want to substitute this equation 3 on equation 1 if you want to be left with v2 then you have to make v1 the subject of a formula if you want to be left with v1 first, then you have to make v2 the subject of a formula. So I'm just going to solve for v1 first. I'm ju I just want to be left with v1. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hide this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation 3 and actually substitute it into equation 1. So you need to, I'm just doing Martinez equations here. So when I do that, I'm, I'm on equation 1, then I have m1 u1 minus v1 that's my equation one now where i see um v2 i am going to substitute u1 plus v1 which is from equation three all right so i just basically have something like this so i'm just going to solve for v1 that's basically what i want to do i want to solve for v1 so this becomes m1 u1 minus m1 v1 is equals to m2 u1 plus m2 v1 all right so in order to solve for v1 you can take this take it this side take this take it this side you end up with m1 u1 minus m2 u1 this is going to be equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v1 as well all right so i think from here is very easy uh, you can actually solve for this one very easily so you can actually see here if you take out u1 out you just end up with m1 minus m2 and then you just take u1 out and then basically this is m1 plus m2 and then you take v1 out and then it's very easy then v1 is going to be equals to m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 so i i Normally when I teach, I, I, I sometimes show this, sometimes I don't show it to my students. But generally, um, I mean, for, for this one, just to show you where everything comes from, I felt it's going to be best to actually just work it out. So this is something that, this is just the equation that you can. Now, I mean, if you know this equation, or you can cram it by heart if you want. Once you have this equation, you, you know this equation, you can actually just use it. You don't need to show how you got this equation so it just depends if they say to you show then you have to show it um but then if they just want you to just find the velocity whatever and you can just say this is going to be the equation and you just substitute like i'm going to do in the examples because i've shown this i can't repeat this um over and over again and also you can actually use this equation here um this equation here this this is a very good equation as well you can actually use this equation as well. Um, you could just easily show that this is going to be the case and you can actually use this equation as well, depending on the information. Let me say, for instance, you are given U1, you are given V1, or you are given V2, you can just find V1. And if this is only true if you have one of the masses stationary, that's basically the case, okay? All right, so let's just have it here. So remember my equation one, my equation one says M1, I think it says U1, V1, 
going to be m2 v2 all right so where i see so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to substitute i mean you could okay i think the easiest way is just to this was equation one just go and take this equation three it's easy just resubstitute it v1 is equal to v2 so just make v1 the subject of formula just say that and then um sorry it's just going to be v2 minus u1 basically that's what it's going to be v1 all right and then just substitute that and just call it equation number four if you want take this equation number four substitute it here you end up with m1 u1 minus m1 where you see v1 you're going to put v2 minus u1 and then you have m2 v2 and then you just end up with m1 u1 minus um, m1 v2 minus okay this is minus and minus so this is going to be plus and then this is going to be m1 u1 this is going to be m2 v2 all right so i think from here you can just do a little bit of maths um this and that is going to be two twice of that so this is 2 m1 u1 this is going to be equals to m1 v2 plus m2 v2 so i'm just going to solve for v2 i'm going to skip some steps then you just end up with 2m1 divided by m1 plus m2 and then u1 so you can see that you are just finding these equations and they are only dependent on the masses and the initial velocities and i'm sure you can actually derive forms of equations depending on the information that you have all right so you could just just use these equations as fact basically you could just just use them as fact all right so the second case that we can consider is what happens if both both of them are actually moving uh, initially and then they collide all right so in this situation i have m1 there's my m1 it's moving with the velocity u1 in that way all right now and then i have m2 right there's m2 now remember in these equations you are not substituting whether, whether they are negative or positive you don't care about that you're just substituting you're just solving it as vectors um and then that's why i'm not putting in the minuses so this one could be moving that way or could be moving that way it doesn't matter but then it's just moving with u2 then maybe afterwards we have a situation maybe whereby uh u2 is moving that way so m2 is moving that way then maybe let's just say you have m1 now it could be anything i don't know i mean it just depends on the problem and then it's just m1 this one and then you and then v1 all right so you have a situation like this and you are told that this is elastic all right and then basically how would you go about this again the momentum before is going to be equals to the momentum after and then you're just going to be saying m1 u1 plus m2 u2 and this is going to be equals to m uh, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 that's basically what you're going to have here uh, you're going to have this situation here and then um you put you could group the v1s and you could group the v2s um as we did before so this is just m1 minus m1 v1 this is going to be m2 v2 minus m2 u2 okay so this is going to be m1 u1 minus v1 this is going to be m2 v2 minus u2 and this is fine um all right so just call it equation one so you can already guess what's going to happen then you consider the kinetic energy um if i consider the kinetic energy and then what am i going to have the kinetic energy before is going to be equal to the kinetic energy after so <clears throat> i'm going to skip the step you know all of them is going to have half so you are going okay let me not skip because if i skip and then some of you don't understand this is going to be half m1 u1 squared 
plus half m2 u2 squared this is going to be half m1 v sorry i always forget when i get here v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared all right so you're going to basically cancel all the halves and then what i'm going to do after canceling all the halves i'm going to take all the v1 this side and then i'm going to take the v2 put it this side so if i do that i'm left with m1 u1 squared minus m1 v1 squared i just took this one and then put it this side i'm going to take this one and then i'm going to put it this side so if i do that this becomes i have this one which is m2 v2 squared and then minus m1 uh m2 sorry m2 uh u2 u2 sounds very funny u2 all right u2 okay and then in this case what you're going to have now is going to be m1 u1 squared minus v1 squared and then this is going to be m2 v2 squared minus u2 squared i don't know what's happening all right so i have this situation here now again i mean you can probably predict that this is a difference of two squares so it's going to be u1 minus v1 uh, and then this is going to be um, u1 plus v1 and then this one is going to be m2 and then this is going to be v2 minus u2 and then v2 plus u2 all right so you just have a situation like that and then i think this is the best that you could do and then you could just say this is just equation two so what you could do now is where you see for instance if you check here i have m2 this uh, i'm not sure if you can see okay i think you can see all right and then so where i say this i'm going to substitute it with this basically so there's my m2 minus and then bracket v2 so i'm going to substitute this one so i'm left with m1 u1 minus v1 and then u1 plus v1 this is going to where i see m2 i'm going to put m1 so the strategy is more or less similar and then this is v2 to what we had before over u2 so you can see that the m1 cancels this and that cancels and then i'm basically left with so actually let me not call this equation no, no it's fine i could call it equation two so and then i have u1 plus v1 is going to be equals to v2 plus u2 all right you could write this and say u1 plus v1 is going to be equals to u2 plus v2 you could say that is still fine and call this equation three all right all right that's your equation three and then i have to bring in that equation that i had on top uh, in order for you to remember what's happening all right so it just depends what i want to eliminate here so if i want to solve for v1 first or i want to solve for v2 first it just depends on what i want to do so i okay okay so i want to be left with v2 on my equation i'm I, sorry i want to be left with v1 on my equation so i'm going to make v2 the subject of the formula first so i'm going to make v2 the subject of the formula if i do that i'm left with u1 plus v1 minus u2 all right so we could say actually let's just make this equation number three all right so we're going to make this equation number three all right so if we make this equation number three and then we can substitute on equation number one so what does equation number one say remember equation number one says this u1 minus v1 and then here it says m2 and then v2 minus uh u2 so where i see v2 this v2 here i'll substitute all of that so what i'm going to have i'm going to have m1 u1 minus m1 v1 this is going to be equals to m2 v2 let me start it like that and then m2 so i'm just basically um expanding this um and then and then you have u2 all 
right so i'm just multiplying the brackets and everything else so that it's easy to follow all right and then so where i save it who i'm going to put this basically and then it becomes m1 u1 minus m1 v1 this is going to be equals to m2 and then u1 plus v1 minus u2 and then minus m2 u2 so when you do this this becomes m1 u1 minus m1 v1 this becomes m2 u1 plus m2 v1 minus m2 u2 m2 u2 and then uh, minus again m2 u2 all right so I'm, I'm just going to have this situation and then if i um okay and then what i'm going to have after this is i'm just going to have let me take this v1 put it okay let me, i'm going to take this one put it this side and then this one uh, is going to be okay let me not let me not do that first let me just say this is going to be m1 u1 minus m1 v1 let me simplify it first and then you see this m2 this 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 basically two of them m2 u2 there's two of them so i'm going to have m2 ui plus u1 plus m2 v1 minus two s minus two m2 u2 all right so after that, and then I can just solve. I'll take this one, put it this side, and then it will. I will end up with a situation whereby m1 v1 plus m2 v1 is going to be equals to. Um, this is going to be equals to m1 u1 uh, minus m2 u1 plus twice m2 uh, m2 u2 all right so if you don't know what i did i just took this one this side it became positive and then i took this one i took it this side i took this one i took it this side and then afterwards i just flipped the whole thing up so that uh, this v1 that was sub because i initially took this one to the right so that the right hand side became the left hand side and the left hand side became the right hand side and then you ended up with something like this that's basically what i did um i think at this stage if you are here you should be should be quite easy for you to actually work these things around all right so if you look at this i can summarize and say v1 is m1 plus m2 and then this is going to be equals to and then this is going to be m1 minus m2 put brackets there and then u1 plus 2 m2 v u u2 not v u2 all right so basically v1 is going to be equals to if you if you do this is going to be m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 and then u1 and then plus 2 m2 over m1 plus m2 u2 all right so this is another important equation that you guys can use a very important equation that you can use all right so what about if you want to get um if if you want to get v2 all right so remember that we are going to actually um use this equation i'm going to manipulate it so that i make v1 the sort of formula and then so that i'll be left with v2 now that's basically what i'm going to do now all right so remember i had this one that says u1 plus v1 is going to be v2 plus u2 all right i had that equation so what i'm going to do i'm going to make v1 the subject of a formula and then it just basically becomes v2 plus u2 minus u1 all right and then you can call this equation i think i had four equations already so this is going to be equation five i think i'm not sure um I, i'm okay i'm lazy to go back and then remember um the first equation it says m1 u1 minus v1 is going to be equals to m2 v2 minus 
u2 right and then that was equation number one so you're going to take this equation five and substitute it here when you do that you're going to end up with u this one minus m1 and then v1 and then this is going to be m2 where you see sorry um i made a mistake all right so where i see okay maybe let me just write it actually just say v1 and then this is going to be m2 v2 minus m2 u2 and then you're just going to have m1 u1 minus m1 where i see v1 i'm going to put all of that and i'm just going to multiply it is going to be v2 and then that's going to be another minus m2 u2 another minus so this one is going to be plus sorry because it's going to be this minus multiplied by this minus it's going to be plus and then this is going to be m uh one um so everything should be m1 not everything should be m1 and then u1 all right and then this is going to be equals to m2 v2 minus m2 u2 Right, so you should end up with an equation that looks like that. All right, okay. And then afterwards, when you summarize this equation, you should end up with V2. You just do your math the similar way that I've been doing it, and then you end up with something like this M1 over M1 plus M2, and then this is going to be U1, and then this is going to be plus M2 minus M1 m1 plus m2 and then this is going to be u2 so you should end up with an equation that looks like that all right so let's just summarize all of these equations and then we're just going to use them in an example all right so if i have a situation whereby i have a mass m1 m2 m1 m2 and then this one u2 is zero f best this one uh u1 is has a value whatever the value is so the equations that i can use um on this one is going to be equals to v1 is going to be equals to m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 and then u1 that's that's the first one the second one is v2 and then uh, v2 is going to be equals to 2m1 over m1 plus m2 and then u1 okay all right all right so all of them are just dependent on m1 all right so an example would be let me just say i have an object like this and then it's moving with u1 is equals to six meters per second and then let's just say the mass m1 is just two kilograms and then there's an object and then let's just say this is m2 let's just say this one is 1.5 kilograms and initially u2 is at zero meters per second and then basically you are asked to find the final speeds for both the first object and the second object so what you'll say is that okay fine and then v1 is just going to be m1 minus m2 just use the fact because you have derived this it, there's no need to re-derive it again and then this is going to be m1 we said is 2 minus 1.5 and then this is 2 plus 1.5 and then you multiply everything you can put a bracket here if you want you're multiplying everything by 6 so basically this is 0 0,5 divided by 3.5 multiplied by 6 and then how much is that okay so this is going to be 0 0.9 basically let's just say it's going to be 0 0.9 meters per second it's going to go to the right so which means afterwards v1 is going to continue to the right um, I'm definitely sure even U2, um, the second one is also going to continue to the right. So if I want to find V2, it's just going to be 2M1 over M1 plus M2 U1. This is going to be 2 times 2. And then this is going to be 2 plus 1.5. All right. And then multiply by 6. All right, so basically this is going to be equals to 4 over 3.5 multiplied by 6, and that is going to be equals to 
um, 6.9. So this is just going to be 6.9, basically roughly. It's just going to be roughly 6.9 meters per second. So both of them are going to move to the right. So what you will notice here is that if the mass v is if the mass if mass m1 is less than m2 then generally your v1 is going to be less than zero okay so that's something that you should notice as well all right then generally v2 is always going to be positive v2 is always going to be greater than zero because it's just no way you can you can make sure make it positive you can make it negative so it's always going to go to the right um, the one that can go to the left is this one, all right? Um, it, it is possible also for this one to stop, for V1 to come in, just hit V2, transfer the energy to V2, V2 continues, and this one stops. And this is the case, for instance, if your M1 is equals to M2, then your V1 is equals to zero, okay? Then V2 is always going to have some energy, and it's always going to be greater than zero. Okay, so those are just the special cases that you can actually uh, have a look at. All right, now let's look at a case whereby there's an object M1 and then there's an object U1, it's moving with velocity U1. Um, let's just say it doesn't matter which direction it's moving. Um, and then this is U2, this is M2. All right, so remember the equations that we have here. We have that V1 is going to be 2, M2 divided by m1 plus m2 u2 all right and then this is going to be plus m1 minus m2 divided by m1 plus m2 it didn't matter it doesn't matter even if you started with this second term first because of the plus here so basically they are going to commute all right um and then the second equation says v2 is going to be equals to 2 times m1 m1 plus m2 and then this is going to be u1 plus m2 minus m1 this is going to be m1 plus m2 so normally guys they might not give you these equations they might they might not just depends on the lecture okay so yeah let's just say i have an example this is like 2 kg and then maybe i have this one this one is let's just say 1.8 kg in for interest rate and then let's just say this one is six meters per second and this one is going to be let's make it four meters per second and then let's just see how they are going to go all right so we can find v1 so v1 is just simply going to be two times what is m2 this is two and then this is 2 plus 1.8 and then u2 is going to be multiplied by 4 and then this is going to be plus and then m1 is going to be 1.8 minus 2 and then you divide everything by 2 plus 1.8 then you multiply that with u1 and u1 is 6 so you multiply that with 6 and then you can just find out what's going to be that Okay, so this one is going to be 3.9 meters per second. And then this one is going to be equals to 2 times the first one is 1.8. And then this is divided by 2 plus 1.8. And then this is going to be plus, And then this is going to be 2 minus 1.8. And then 2 plus 1.8, you're going to multiply this with u2. u2 is 4, you're going to multiply this with 6. So what is that? That's going to be equals to... Okay, so this one is just going to be 5.8. Oh, okay, sorry guys, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be negative 4. Even this one is supposed to be negative 4 because it's going in that direction. I forgot to put negative 4. So if I put negative 4 here, um, this is 5.4. This is 5.5, sorry. 5.5 meters per second. And then this one, I have to recalculate it. Okay, so this one is not going to be this. Uh, it's actually going to be minus 4.5 meters per second. 
All right, so basically V1 is going to go that way um, and then um, V2 is going to change. So basically they change directions afterwards. All right, so this is 4.5 and then this one, they call it 25.5. Let me just write everything neatly. Remove this. And then I'm going to remove that and then just rewrite it. This is 5.5 meters per second. Sorry about that. I just nearly made a mistake. You 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 need to include the negative. So if it's facing this way, this is actually negative four. Okay, so you need to include the negative because it's facing that way, so it's going to be negative four. Alright, so I, I just nearly forgot that one. Alright, so this is fine, this is good. All right, so there's something that is called a coefficient of resti of restitution, coefficient of restitution. All right, so this coefficient of restitution basically allows you to determine whether the if you know the final speeds and you know the initial speeds, that's the only way you could determine that. And then you could actually determine whether the is going to be elastic, inelastic. So you can actually use that first. Um, if you do, if you, like for instance, if I tell you the speeds and I'm asking you is this elastic or not, then you can use the coefficient of uh, restitution. So this is given by k is going to be equals to, all right. So whatever the final speed of mass uh, one is, and then minus two. Then we put this absolute value so that if you get a negative number, it forces this number to be positive. That's what this absolute value basically is doing. And then this is going to be u y u one minus u two. So even this one, put it under the that so that the coefficient is just always greater than zero, basically. So if k is equal to zero, then you basically have a completely, um, completely um in elastic collision all right if your k is equal to one then it means that this is completely or perfect elastic collision all right but then if your k is less than one but it's greater than zero it's always going to be greater than zero it's going to always be greater greater or equal to zero but then we are, if it's greater than zero, but it's less than one, then it is just inelastic. Remember the, the inelastic case is just, you have two masses, they come and then they collide and then they separate afterwards. When it's perfectly or completely inelastic, it's two masses come together and then they stick together and move with one velocity. Then when they are elastic, they come together, they collide, they, they move in different velocities but the kinetic energy is preserved meaning that whatever the kinetic energy was before is going to be total kinetic energy um, afterwards as well that that is basically that so i'm not going to do examples on this one i mean you could just take the velocities that you just calculated and just figure out if uh, which one is going to be elastic which one is going to be inelastic if you want um if you want so for instance maybe maybe let me just do something let me just say, for instance, I have a case whereby um, I have M1 is going to have U1 of 6 meters per second. And then afterwards, there's M2 and then M2 is going to be 0. Let's just say this is going to be 0 uh, meters per second. And then afterwards, let's just say they stick together and they are moving with one velocity V. And let's just say the velocity v that they are moving with is whatever. Let's just say it's five meters per second. I'm just making the values up. All right. So if you were to calculate k for this one when they are moving together, I'm just giving an example. If you were to calculate k for this one when they are moving together, you would actually find that k is actually going to be equals to k is actually going to be equals to what is v1. Uh, so the final velocity is going to be five. For the first object, for the second object, it's also going to be five, and then here uh, u1 is just six, and then minus zero. So you can just say that this is going to be zero. So this is completely inelastic. That's what basically we mean. All right. So you could actually come up with different examples, and then you can just see what's going to happen. All right. 
All right, so now let's look at momentum into D. All right, so this is basically what we want to look at now. So we want to look at momentum into D. So this is a situation where you have a mass that is traveling at a speed V, and basically that speed is at an angle like this. So you are going to get a momentum vector, and that momentum vector will be given by this. But what you will notice here is that this speed V can be broken down into components. So you remember with vectors, I can get Vx and I can get Vy. All right, so I can get these vectors. So which means that this is basically going to be equals to Vx plus Vy. Okay, and then when I do that, it's mvx plus mvy i'm just expanded it and then when you do that you find that oh so basically my momentum my total momentum is going to be the momentum in the x direction and the momentum in the y direction so you can actually find that so which means that if 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 i have a momentum vector all right so if i have an object and it's moving with the speed and then this object has a momentum. If I know Px, if this is my momentum vector and I know what is Px and I know what is Py, I can actually find the, the magnitude of P. It's going to be given by whatever the momentum in the x is squared plus whatever the momentum in the y is squared. That's basically what it means, All right? And I can actually find Px if I know the momentum is simply going to be, if there's theta here, is simply going to be P, cos of theta, and then Py, if they say find the Y component of the momentum, is simply going to be the momentum, sine of theta. Again, it depends on your geometry where theta is. Now, remember, don't claim this. It's just based on this geometry, this is the case. All right? So you can find something like that. So now let's just do one nice example. All right, so you basically have an object that is traveling this way with V, and then you say that this is going to be 32 degrees uh, with the horizontal, and then let's just say V is eight meters per second. And then what they want you to find is they want you to find, um, they want you to find um, the, the, the x component, maybe let me do it like this so it becomes very interesting. I only give you the x component of the velocity and I'm just saying that this is going to be 4.5 meters per second. All right, and then I'm telling you that the mass is going to be a 2 kg. Well, I like this 2 kg. All right, so they want you to find the, the momentum of, of, of this, right? So what you would then do here is, well, the momentum, is going to be the momentum in the x plus the momentum in the y. But in order for me to find the momentum in the x, I need to know what is velocity in the x, and I need to know what is velocity in the y. So what about the velocity in the y? Well, I don't know what is going to be the speed here, but I can find vy. I can find vy is going to be equals to, um, is going to be equals to so what i can do here i can actually use 10. now this is nice because it's different i can use 10 theta and if i use 10 theta vy over vx is going to be 10 of theta which means that vy is going to be vx 10 of theta which is 4.5 10 of 32 degrees and that is going to be equals to all right, so this is going to be 2.8. All right, so I'm going to find the total momentum, the momentum in the X, the momentum in the Y as well. All right, so that's basically what I'm going to find. This is going to be 2 meters per second. All right, so now since I know this, I can now find V. V is going to be the square root of Vx squared plus vy squared remember we did kinematics in 2d so that's what basically i'm using so this is the square root of 4.5 squared plus 2.8 squared this is a 2.8 here 2.8 and my v 
is basically going to be equals to okay so my v here is going to be 5.3 meters per second so now since i know that i can actually just find the momentum which is just going to be mv which is just going to be two times 5.3 and then basically this is going to be 10 plus 0 0.6 is going to be 10.6 uh, kilogram meters per second okay all right so that's just my momentum vector now the momentum vector is always going to be the direction of v right because if you look at this this momentum vector here whatever the direction of v is the square direction of the momentum vector which means that the momentum vector is also going to be at 32 degrees uh, like that basically so i can actually find px and i can actually find py in this case so my px in this case is just going to be p cos of theta which is going to be 10.6 cos of 32 degrees and that is going to be equals to okay so basically it's approximately going to be equals to nine um, kilograms meters per second and then let's just find the momentum in the y this is p sine of theta this is 10.6 sine of 32 should be something else and then this is basically 5.6 six kilograms meters per second all right okay so basically these are this is how you can actually find it all right we can also find the change in momentum when we actually have um different um angles so here i'm not going to derive anything i'm just going to just do an example on this as well all right so here let me just say i have uh, ms m um, and then this mass m basically is traveling then let's just give the mass 2 kg as well let's just give it a 2 kg right it's traveling at this and it makes a, and then it hits a wall all right so it's making an angle of 45 degrees here so it's going to hit a wall and then let's just say afterwards it also comes out with the velocity same velocity so you u here was like eight meters per second it still come out with velocity v which is still eight meters per second and you are told that actually this is going to be 45 degrees you are told that this is going to be 45 degrees so the question would be maybe like can you find the change in momentum in this case now you know that the change in momentum is going to be given by m the delta v right which is that all right now this is going to be equals to m and then which is the final velocity minus the initial velocity which is u but now here's the issue now both the final velocities and the initial velocities have the x and the y component which means that this is going to be m now v has vx plus these are vectors remember these are vectors plus vy right so that's just vx so let me use a different color to color this uh, okay and then afterwards i'm going to say this is going to be plus that's just v and then there's a minus which is this minus what is u you will have the x component plus the y component these are vectors as well all right so let's just do that this is going to be equals to m then you close the whole bracket this is going to be equals to m what is the x component it's going to be v and then if you look at this theta is going to be somewhere here and it's going to be 45 degrees okay so basically it's going to be cos of 45 degrees in the negative x direction so it's going to be negative here negative x direction all right because it's pointing negative and then the y component is going to be positive because it's going to go up the y component is going to go up of the velocity vector and then this is going to be v and then this is sine of 45 degrees all right and then that's it with this one i'm going to put a big bracket here and then this u ui whatever it is uh there's minus 
and then let's open the bracket and then let me just set everything this side it's fine um remember the mass is going to be 2 kg and then this is going to be ux is going to be if you look at it it's going to be this one this is ux and then this is ui so ux is going to be equals to u cos of 45 as well and then plus and then this one is positive everything here is positive so it's going to be u sine of 45 this is in <clears throat> sorry this is in the y this is in the x all right now if you were to substitute this on the equation remember u is the same as v so basically you end up with um this open bracket let's close this bracket here you end up with this open bracket this is minus v cos of 45 um in the x direction minus you take this one and then when you see u you put v v cos of 45 in the x then what about the y if i group the y's i'm going to put a plus and then i'm going to group the y the first y is this one v sine of 45 in the y and then this y here where i see you i'm putting v because they are equal so it's going to be v sine but then there's going to be the minus because i'm going to multiply by this minus so there's going to be a minus here sine of 45 uh space is still small sine of 45 degrees okay now you can see that this one this term becomes zero so which means that the change in momentum is just in the x direction all right so this is just going to be minus m and then two times v and then cos of 45 i think is going to be root 2 over 2 all right or 2 over root 2 you can do it like that so i just rationalize this so basically this is how it's going to be in the x direction so it's telling me that this is going to be in a negative x direction i mean i could just find the value this is minus 2 and then this is 2 and then v is 8 and then root 2 over root 2 and then this basically becomes 4 4 times 8 uh, basically uh, or 8 times 4 is going to be um, 32 and then you just multiply that with root 2 over 2 so this is 22.6 all right so this is going to be 22.6 6 um, in the negative x direction so let's just say if this is true right will my change in v be in the negative x direction let's just see all right so what do i have the initial vector v v1 sorry u is in that direction then the final vector v is in that direction remember the angles are the same so if i want to find the change in momentum it's going to be given by this over the change in velocity so it means that if I find the direction of the change in velocity, I will find the direction of the change in momentum. So let me see if I can find the direction of the change in velocity. But remember, the change in velocity is going to be v plus minus u. You remember that from vectors. All right. So minus u looks like that. Yeah, minus u looks like that. So how does v look like? v looks like that. There's v. There's vector v minus u the vector minus u looks like that so i have to draw another vector that looks like that this is minus u and you can see here that this is going to be equals to this is the change in velocity vector so it's in the x direction indeed and remember another thing that the change in momentum is going to be equals to the average force multiplied by time so which means that the average force whatever the direction of the change in momentum is is going to be the direction of the change in average force as well so maybe if this question was to ask you what would be the direction of the change in average force 
then the average force that is going to be applied by the wall will also be in this direction. All right. Because why? Because the momentum is in that direction. The change in momentum is in that direction, which is the direction of the change in V. So once you find the direction of change in V, you have found the direction of the change in momentum, you have found the direction of the average force, you have actually found the direction of acceleration as well. The, of the net acceleration. The net acceleration is going to be that direction, basically. Okay? So basically, that's what you are going to, to have in, in, in this problem. It's a very interesting problem. I just thought I should add it. Um, it's one of those interesting problems that you can find um, in this section. All right. And then otherwise, we can do inelastic collisions in 2D. We can do inelastic collision in 2D. We can do it. We can do something of, 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 of this nature. So a simple one, I think, is not simple, but then at least the one that I can actually follow up with, that I, that I can do is, all right, let's just say I have an object, and this object is moving in this direction with U1. And let's just say U1 is going to be 20 meters per second. And then afterwards, what I'm going to have is, let's just give it an angle of 28 degrees. And then I have another object, there's my another object that is coming in. So they are going to collide somewhere. And then afterwards, when they collide, this object is going to collide with this object here. And both of them are going to move as a unit and maybe they are going to move in whatever direction. Let's just call that direction V. But they are going to move with the same, 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 same velocity, basically. All right. So let's just give what's going to be M1. So we are going to say M1 is going to be 50 kg. And let's just say M2 is going to be 70 kg. So we are just using those ones that we used previously. All right. So this one, maybe we say that it's moving with an initial speed V. Sorry, U2 of 25 meters per second. Now the question is, what's going to happen can i find um something here all right i have to find i can find theta theta is going to be this i have to find the final velocity and i have to find theta all right so i have to find that so what you have to realize in this situation is that the momentum in the x is going to be the total momentum in the x initial is going to be the same as the total moment initial momentum in the y so let me bring everything down a bit maybe somewhere here all right so what you have to realize is that the total momentum in the x before is going to be the same as the total momentum in the x after and the total momentum in the in the y before is going to be the same as the total momentum in the y after right i know it can be a little bit some some students may get confused now when you're talking about 2D in this case. Now, if you look at the x-axis, what's happening after? Remember, you're going to have u1x here, and then you're going to have u1y here. So what's happening in the x? So in the x, I'm going to have the mass of 1, u1x, plus the mass of 2, there is no velocity for 2 in the x direction, so this is going to be 0. This is going to be equals to mass 1 plus mass 2. And then I have to consider Vx. And then this is going to be Vy. And then just consider the velocity in the x direction. That's what we mean um, when we're saying that this is going to be the case. All right, if I if I break this down further, it's going to be m1 u1 uh, cos of 28 degrees. This is going to be m1 plus m2, and then my velocity vx is going to be v cos of theta. I don't know what that cos of theta is. All right, so there's there's the one. Then the second one is going to be equals to either y. All right, so in the y, I can actually find that. 
so in the y i'm going to have a situation whereby um this is going to be m1 u1 y all right this is a vector plus m2 but now i do have u2 y which is u2 basically so i'm just going to put u2 because u2 is the same as u2 y because that's the only one and u2 x is zero because the only velocity here is just going in the y direction okay so i'm just going to put u2 there and then this is going to be equals to m1 plus m2 and then multiplied by vy all right so let's now better break it down so i'm going to say this is going to be equation one so if I break it down again, this is just going to be m1 u1 sine of theta plus m2 u2 sine of 28 in of theta sine of 28 degrees. Then this is going to be cast to m1 plus m2 and then this is going to be v sine of theta because I don't know what theta is. All right. And then I'm going to say this is equation number two. And then what I'm going to do from here is I am going to say, all right, fine. I am going to take whatever equation one is and equation two. I am going to say I'm going to divide equation two with equation one. So on the left hand side, what I have is I'm going to have M1, U1, sine 28 uh, plus M2, U2. And then you are going to have divided by what is equation one, m1 u1 cos of 28. This is going to be equal to on the right hand side. I'm going to have m1 plus m2 v sine of theta divided by m1 plus m2 v cos of theta. So you can see that this, all of this basically cancels one another, all right? And then you basically have M1 U1 sine of 28 plus M2 U2. This is going to be M1 U1 cos of 28. And then this basically becomes sine over cos is just the same as 10 of theta. So you know everything here, you can just basically find out what 10 of theta is going to be. All right. So 10 of theta is going to be equals to, I think we said that M1 was 50. Let's write the values. M1 was 50 kg. We said M2 was 70 kg. We said U1 was 20 meters per second. We said U2 was 25 five meters per second all right so let's just substitute everything m1 is 50 and then u1 is 20 and then sine of 28 degrees m2 is 70 and then this is going to be equals to 25 and then you are going to divide everything by 50 i think and then u1 is going to be um what is u1 u1 is going to be 20 and then this is cos of 28 you have all of this and then from there you can just find theta let's just find out how much is that okay so i'm going to find that this is going to be 2.5 so basically theta is just going to be equals to approximately 63 degrees okay so that's what theta is going to be so the car is going to move with theta is close to that and now if i want to find the velocity v of the car i can actually just find it from any of these equations okay it's fine i'll just take it from this one the easy one that i think i can use you can take any the easy one i can use is this one m1 u1 cos of 28 degrees is m1 plus m2 v cos of theta so you just substitute everything here since you know since you know 
since you know theta now, you can just find V is just going to be M1, U1, cos of 28 degrees divided by M1 plus M2 cos of theta, whatever cos of theta is. What is M1 is 50, what is M2 we said is 20, this is cos of 28 degrees and then you divide this by 50 plus 70, you put this in brackets and then just say cos of 63. All right, and then basically you'll get what is going to be V1. All right, so V1 is just going to be 16.2 uh, meters per second. All right, so you could get the X component and the Y component of the velocity, uh, of the final velocity. You could do that. Um, so this is one interesting question um, that you can have. All right, so from here, let's just discuss the last topic, which is just going to be elastic um, collision. All right, so let's just look at elastic collisions. Elastic collisions in 2D. All right, so what's going to happen when I have 2D, basically? All right, so we can just look at a situation. There is a, there is a situation. Let me just say I have an object of mass 1 moving with U1. There it is again. It's mass 2 moving with U. It, it could even be at an angle, but it's fine. You're just going to consider the single one. What happens afterwards, I just have u2 maybe m1 sorry maybe i have m1 moving that way and then maybe i have m2 and there's theta 1 here um and then m2 is moving with theta 2 so meaning that the angles may or may not be equal we don't know uh, it just depends um on the values right and then this is theta 2 so anything can happen so now we consider in the case that what's going to happen in terms of the two dimensions all right so in this case i'm not going to do an example on this one maybe if you want me to do an example maybe i can just do a video whereby maybe i'm looking at like two maybe like one or two examples on this all right so let me bring it down so even here what you're going to have is the total momentum in the x direction before is going to be the total uh, momentum in the x direction after and then the question is what is um, that total momentum um, here all right so before i just have m1 uh, u1 plus m2 u2 everything is in the x it's going to be equals to m1 and then it's going to be u1 cos of theta 1 plus m2 sorry not u v supposed to be v because these are final velocities then this is m2 v2 still cos because it's adjacent theta 2 though all right also you can have a situation where you say momentum in the y before it's going to be the momentum in the y after and then what is that momentum now before in the y you basically have zero because remember here so u1 is the same as u1x u1y u1y is zero u2x is the same as u2 and u2y is zero so which means that before m1 sorry i forgot okay I, it's fine even if i don't put x here so let me just break it down maybe so that you can follow everything I don't want to confuse you. So this is going to be M1 U1Y plus M2 U2Y. This is going to be equals to, this is just going to be M1 V1 sine, because this is just like same as like M1 V1Y, right? which is m1 v sine theta 1. That's how basically I'm getting this. And then this is m2 
v2 sin theta 2 this is the same as m v2 m2 v2 y basically all right and now if you do this i mean we said this is zero this is zero so everything here is going to be zero which is going to be m1 v1 sine of theta 1 plus m2 v2 sine of theta 2 so this is going to be equation 2 this is going to be equation 1 and then the third equation that you could use as well just depending on the problem and if the problem allows you to it needs you to find the third equation okay so the kinetic energy before is going to be the same as the kinetic energy after which is just half mv squared uh, plus half mu sorry mu1 squared plus half m2 u2 squared and then this is going to be half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared right and then this could be your equation three and then you could just combine and do whatever mathematics that you want to do um i don't know why it's doing it like this here all right so and then you could just do whatever mathematics that whatever mathematics that you want to do and just depending on the problem um so i won't come up with the problem on this one if you want me i can just probably just make one or two problems and then basically solve those problems and show you how you can solve this if you want me to do that just leave it on your comments and then i'll check them out and see if you guys want me to do that otherwise guys i think this is fine i think this is okay we have taken quite some time um just going through the section like this i will probably make a video on the center of mass which is related it can be related to momentum but i think it's an important question yeah it's an important concept for you to know maybe some universities may be teaching it and they may require you to understand it some are not teaching it it just depends so it just depends on what the syllabus covers all right otherwise guys uh cheers i will see you guys whenever i upload this second video all right not the second the, the, the next video all right cheers